All right, hey everyone, welcome back to the fourth video of this What The Hack serverless hack video series. I'm your host, cloud developer advocate, Gwen, and let's go ahead and get started with the third challenge. So I'm here at the What The Hack website. Challenge three is create resources. Prerequisites, of course, was the challenge number two, create a hello world function where we created an Azure function locally and got it to return our name via a query string or JSON body. If you haven't checked that video out, it'll be video number two. So do check that out because it's a prereq. So now we're gonna be creating resources that we'll need to deploy our full on solution. It tells us here that you must provision a few resources in Azure before you start developing the solution. Ensure all resources use the same, use the same resource group for easier cleanup. Put resources in the same region as the, same re as the resource group. Remember that resor some resources need to have unique names. Okay, awesome. Uh, and then it tells us a bunch of resources that we need to create. I think there's a total of 11. Success criteria here is you have 11 resources in your resource group in the same region. It includes the stu two storage accounts associated to your function apps. There's a bunch of resources here at the bottom that you can use. So let's step through this. I do encourage you to read absolutely everything. I did read it before just to save a little bit of time on the recording of this video. Uh, but let's go ahead and open up my Azure portal and start off by going to resource groups. And I'm going to create a new resource group. I'm going to make sure it's in the right subscription that I want it to be. And I'm going to call it what the hack dash resource group. And I'm going to put it in East US2. Hit review and create. And then hit create once again once the validation passes. So we've got that first one done. Create a resource group. Now it's telling us to create an Azure Cosmos DB account. If this takes a while, move ahead and come back to finish the containers. Awesome. So now we're going to go to Cosmos. DB. I'm going to hit create. And then it tells us to use core SQL for the API. So I'm going to select that. And it tells us to disable geo redundancy and multi region rights. And then it tells us some containers that we need to create. So I'm going to make sure I'm in the right subscription. And I'm going to select that resource group that I just created that what the hack dash resource group. I'm going to call this what the what the hack cosmos. I'm gonna make sure it is in East US2. And then I'm gonna set my capacity mode to serverless. And then I'm gonna to go to global distribution, make sure it's disabled. And I think that's all it told us to disable and multi-region write. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna hit review and create. And I'm gonna scroll down and hit create. Okay, so that's creating now. It tells us here, if this takes a while, move ahead and come back to finish the containers. So inside of the account, we have to create a couple of containers. This might take a while, so let's come back. So now it tells us to create a storage account. Refer to this one as init. So I'm going to open up a... Actually, I'm going to double click that. And in here, I'm going to go to storage. Go to sto oops, sto storage, storage accounts. And I'm gonna hit create. And then I'm gonna call this, make sure it's in the right resource group. I'm gonna call this what the hack init. Because it told us to put init in the name. Uh, East US2, standard is completely fine. Did it give us any more specific? Nope, nothing else. All right, let's head back here. And then we can hit review. Make sure it's in the right resource group, right region. Perfect. What the hack init. Awesome. And then I'm gonna hit create. Inside this storage account, it's telling us to create a container for images and for export. So if that creates right away, we can go ahead and add those. Let me take a look at this account. The account is still creating the Cosmos DB account. So let's let these two run. Then we're going to have to create a function app uh, using the .NET run time stack. And it'll create a new storage for us, storage account. And then it'll, we also need to disable application insights. Fantastic. So let us go to, uh, let's finish the storage account one. So on the left side on containers, I'm going to hit new and it tells us to create containers, one called images and one called export. So I'm going to go ahead and provide the name images and then hit create. And then I'm going to provide the name export, then hit create. Awesome. So that is done. So we're done with our storage. Now let's go to functions. So let's go to function, function app, awesome. And then I'm going to create a new function app. It 
tells us that this first one, we just need to put app in it. So I'm going to call it toll booth app. Make sure we're selecting the right resource group. I'm going to call this toll booth. Uh, let's make that lowercase, toll booth app. Awesome. And we have to select the right runtime stack. This is going to be .NET. And the right region, East US 2, everything else is fine. Uh, hosting, oh, it did tell us to disable application insights. So let's make sure we disable that in the monitoring tab and make sure we hit no. And then we can go to review and create and it's creating a new storage account for us. Awesome. Then we'll hit create. Perfect. So that'll be the first function. Following that, we're going to create a function app that has events in the name. And this one, we're going to be using the Node.js runtime stack. So we'll go back to that resource group and we see our resources are starting to accumulate here. We'll create another function. And actually I like going through here. It's a little easier if you go to the service page specifically. So I hit create again, select that same subscription that we're working in. What the heck? And then we're going to call this toll booth events. The runtime stack is node. Uh, make sure we select the right region. And the same thing here is that we want to disable monitoring. So we're going to hit no. Anything else specific to this? Nope, nothing else. All right, then I'm going to hit review and create. And then I'm going to make sure everything is right here. Fantastic, hit create. So we've got this account here, we've got this function app, and we've got this function app. Let's go back to Cosmos DB and see if we can get these containers to set up. Yeah, it looks like it's ready for us. Left side, we're going to hit Data Explorer. Make sure you're in the Cosmos DB account. I want to close this, and we have to first create a new container. It tells us that the create a container database ID license plate. I'm just going to copy paste that, and we'll hit that there. As for the container ID, container ID processed, awesome, processed, and then what else does it tell us? The partition key is this license plate text. License plate text. There we go. And everything else we can leave as default. We'll hit OK there. Let me close that. And then we also have to create another container that's going to use the same database that we just created, which is the license plate. But this one's going to be called Needs Manual Review, and it's going to have a different partition key. Alrighty. So we'll let that create. It looks like it's going to take a minute or so. So what I'm going to do is open up the resource group and we see we have two app service plans. We've got the toll booth app in here. We've got three storage accounts. So the resources are starting to add up. Awesome. So once more, I'm going to hit new container. We're going to this time use existing because we've already created a database, but this one is called needs manual review. Awesome. And then we're just going to copy the partition key, which looks like it's file name. And we're going to delete this here. And then awesome. We're going to hit. Okay. So those are our two containers. So we've completed this one, two, three, four, and five. Now we need to create an event grid topic. Leave schema as event grid schema. Okay. So let's head into event grid topic. Awesome. And I'm going to create one and I'm just going to call this again, make sure we're putting it in the right place, right resource group. I'm going to call this what the hack topic. And then I'm going to make sure it's in East US 2. And then I think we're good here. We're going to hit review and create. Awesome. And the schema by default is event grid schema. Perfect. We'll hit create. So we've got our event grid topic. Awesome. Now we need to create a computer vision API with the S1 pricing tier. So let's go to computer, computer vision. Awesome. And then I'm going to hit create here. I'm going to make sure again, same subscription, same resource group, same region. And I'm going to call this what the hack vision and pricing tier. We have free and standard, and it told us to use standard. Is there anything else that's different here? Nope, that's it. Okay, awesome. And we do have to 
check the terms and such. I've reviewed these before, but make sure you check these. Uh, give them a read before you accept here. So we'll hit review and create. Okay, so we've got our event grid. We got our computer vision. Now we need to create a, a key vault. Perfect. All right. Let's go to, we'll use this here. Uh, we'll go back here and we'll click on the resource group and we can see our resources are adding up here. Now we need to go to key vault and create a new key vault. We'll like create new key vault. We'll call this, uh, that's perfect resource group. And we'll, what the hack? All right, we'll call this what the hack vault. Perfect. East US two. And if your names, uh, some of them need to be unique. So if you have to add like a number or maybe your initials or something like that, go ahead and add those. And awesome. We're gonna, pricing tier standard is fine unless it tells us something. Nope, pricing tier standard. And then we need to create some secrets in here as well. Uh, oh, the computer vision uh, was validating. I didn't hit create yet, so let me hit create. But let's go back to the key vault. And it looks like everything else is fine. So we're gonna hit review and create and validation pass, and we're gonna create that as well. So it looks like we've got everything created. This last step here tells us to configure your toll booth app to use Key Vault for secrets. So remember that toll booth app is, app is an Azure function. So what we have to do is, uh, let's go into the resource group and let's click on toll booth app. And what we need to search for is something called identity on the left side. And then we're going to hit on, then we're going to hit save under system assigned. Essentially, this allows us to use system assigned identities, which are identities that your Azure services use to connect with other Azure services. Okay, awesome. So now what we're going to do is go to the key vault. Going to go to what the heck, and then we're going to go to access policies. And here we need to create a policy that will enable our Azure function to read from our key vault. Right, so I'm gonna hit plus add access policy and we can use a template. We're gonna just say, we don't need certificates. We just really need key and secrets. And then you can leave all these defaults selected here. And under select principle, this is where we assign it to the Azure function that we created. So we'll search for toll booth app, which is right here. And then we're saying here, this policy now has access, or well, this principle, Azure function has access to this resource, Azure Key Vault, with this policy. Then we're gonna hit add. Then we're gonna hit save. Awesome. I'll explain a little bit more about why we wanna do this later on, but right now we're just in the setup. Cool. So we've covered the step nine here, but I skipped this part here that says, create secrets according to below. So we have to create these secrets inside of our Key Vault. So let's go to our Key Vault. And then we'll go to secrets on the left side here. We're gonna close this off. Uh, and it looks like we need to create computer vision API key. So I'm gonna hit add here and then copy that in and I need to get the value. So our computer vision API key on the left side will have keys and endpoints and then I have key one. Gonna copy that there, paste it in here and then everything else, I'll leave it as is. We'll hit create. Awesome, next it says we need to Copy event grid topic key. Uh, we're gonna create that again. And then we need to go to our event grid. So we'll go back to our resource group here and then find our event grid topic resource, which it will scroll down here, event grid topic, we'll click on that. Awesome, we'll have access keys and it's asking us for one of these keys here. And I know I'm not supposed to show keys, but all of this will be deleted by the time these videos are out, so I'm not too worried about that. But for all of you at home, don't show your keys to anyone. Okay, awesome. Then I'm gonna hit create. Now I need Cosmos DB authorization key. Perfect. Then I'm gonna go back to the vault, create another one, paste in that value, and go to our Cosmos DB. Go back to our resource group. Go back to our Cosmos DB account. And again, on the left side, keys, we need a primary key. Then we'll go back to here and paste it in. Awesome, we'll hit create, perfect. And then we need to create one more, I believe, which is blob storage connection. 
uh, over here, generate blob storage connection. Let's go back to our resource group. Fantastic resource group and then blob storage connection, which is that what the hack init one. We don't need the connections to the function apps. And then we have to go on the left side here, access keys. And we need our connection. I believe it's asking for our connection string. Awesome. So I can't copy this for some reason unless I hit show. Okay. Then I go over here, paste that in here, and then we'll hit create. Awesome. So we've created everything here. It says you have 11 resources in your resource group in the same region. Okay. So let's go back to our resource group and let's count how many resources we have. Oh, it already says 11 here. So we have successfully passed this challenge, which is challenge number three. And we are ready to move on to the next one, which is configuration. So I will see you in the next video.